This is McKee Masters Monday, Florida McKee Patreon channel. If you are here, you are at the $50 level. This is max level. This is where you get an insight into how the Florida McKee puts together offensive psychological operations. Now in today's video, or I should say at the end of today's video, I'm going to have an assignment for you guys. It has to do with analyzing our YouTube audience. Because there's something going on I'm noticing, and it's going to be an excellent training tool if what I believe to be the case is the case. And it has to do with the engagement levels and the like-dislike functions. You know, every YouTube channel deals with the idea of always having a certain percentage of people come and dislike for no reason, no matter what, just to be contrary. But, and those levels are predictable. So when they get skewed, when they really get off one way or the other, you know that you have tweaked somebody. And in one of my most recent videos, I've noticed a very strange paradigm, and I've been thinking about it, and I think I know what it is. But we're going to go through the training today, and training, as per se it might be for the assignment. I know we don't do training at this level, but McKee Masters is one of those things, if you're going to understand where I'm coming from, it's going to probably require a continuation of training. Let's go back here real quick. Now, down here in the corner, I know this is hard to see, but basically what it is is a cartoon talking about how... In the 60s, they wanted to prevent interracial marriage to protect the sanctity of marriage and how now in uh, current times they're trying to um, get rid of gay marriage to protect the sanctity of marriage, all talking about perspective. This is really not about my being for or against marriage one way or the other between any two people. I don't really care. It's about perspective and seeing things that we think to be the truth, someone else looking at it from an entirely different perspective and seeing it to be a complete falsehood, even though it's the exact same thing. Psychological operations really plays on people's fears. Fears that they're not unique enough. Fears that they might be too unique, therefore alone. And if they're alone in their thinking, therefore they must somehow be wrong. And it takes away the critical aspect of it when you define right and wrong. The fear will always be there one way or the other. Either I'm right and I'm going along with everybody else who's right. Or I'm wrong, but right in the sense that I feel unique in what I'm doing. So what's good for me personally might not be good overall. This is where truth becomes subjective instead of objective. And I just brought up this picture to, to illustrate that, the right way pointing left and the wrong way pointing right. That sometimes it's not really an either-or thing. I was asked by a, a commenter once to um, say why don't you make a video that uh, tells us what America should do, should do to get on the right track? As if I'm the answer to that for all 50 states, for all 300 and I don't know how many million people, that because I've been able to outline some things that I know are specifically wrong, therefore I must be the source of the way that's right. It's that assumption that always gets made. I brought up this just to illustrate the difference between association and dissociation, that when I think of something or I do something, it's not necessarily either unique or as a result of any particular talent or training that I have. Therefore, when something does or does not work one way or the other, you dissociate yourself from it. And you can just say, okay, in this particular instant, it's instance, it didn't apply, it didn't work, but that doesn't make the idea wrong. It's just everything in its own time. 
which leads us to here. Now this is where it gets a little bit fuzzy. When you're talking about all of the things that we're inundated with on a daily basis, whether it be political or entertainment, we're always continually, whether we think so or not, we're always making continual judgments about good, bad, right, wrong, appropriate, inappropriate. And it's unique to the person. And it really depends on your background. You can take two people um, as children and put them in the same exact household, the same exact environment, and through even tiny, tiny and subtle differences, they can walk down two different paths and end up being completely different and interpreting the, the world in a very, very different way. I guess this was just me getting the, the image of this up. This one, and I know this seems like a whole bunch of random points, but it's going to all play together. And I'm putting this out there now so that you can go back and you can look at this video and see where we covered it. And I would, and I'm going to try to get this in as best as I can so that you can stop the video and read this for yourself. Basically, the idea here is what they're, and this is from 2008, this clip. This is the deep state fairy tale that a lot of people tell themselves. Here it's referred to as the Bureau of Faceless Unaccountability. And the guy says, the Bureau of Faceless Una Unaccountability does not officially exist. But people assume it does because they want to assume it because they want to assume control. People want to believe that they're paying secret people to do secret things that they'd be horrified at, but which need to be done for their own good. So that, of course, the deep state must never be under scrutiny so that the assumption of unaccountability exists, which makes the undeniability and the implausibility of it the most reassuring part of the lie of the deep state. That it couldn't possibly be just some random bad decisions by people that are human beings just like you and me that have led to certain things going wrong in the world. This, the deep state assumption, and this is the point I really wanted to get to, takes a group of people who have quintessentially resisted the idea of relying on government, and they have in their minds created a governmental agency that they have put 100% faith in being responsible for all of the negative and bad and horrible things going on around them in the world. Complete and total faith that if they can't explain it or if this goes bad or that goes bad, there is, of course, a governmental, shadow governmental, whatever, agency responsible. It is the ultimate level of worship and faith. Because anything else means that it might just be random. And that terrifies people. And down here, this guy keeps saying it's a rough and dangerous world. And this, I think what they're subliminally hitting at here, is that that's how people deal with fear. Taking us back to the very, very beginning of where we started. Fear, assumptions, beliefs, all of these things play in together. The last thing I want to put in is this, it's kind of a joke, just so we can kind of laugh at this a little bit. And like I said, I'll get this to where you guys can read it and, uh, and leave it. But basically, he's talking about putting in a whole bunch of subliminal phallic images and nobody realizing that there's actually one right here on top of this girl's head in uh, the uh, cartoon. So... But, without any further ado, the assignment. And let's see if I can bring this up real quick. Alrighty. Even YouTube would say this was odd. Over here, 5,000 views. Only three dislikes. 
The normal run level is about 10 to 1. Maybe a little bit more, depending. I have one, the real popular one that I have is going 660,000 views. It's running about 50-50, but that's just a result of a different audience being present. I don't know why that one got recommended into a whole bunch of people that don't normally watch my channel got um, suggested that video. But if you go through all of my videos and you look at the like-dislike ratio, you'll see the strangeness and the oddness of this over one day. And if you look at it, you see why. If you look at the title, you look at the thumb, which is 95% of any video, regardless of what any creator tells you, people make decisions on whether they're going to watch a video. 95% of that decision is made by the picture they see in the thumbnail and then the title. The channel, the content, irrelevant. My average view is about five minutes. Five minutes and 20 seconds, my average video is about twice that long. So it makes you wonder. It very, very much makes you wonder what's going on in the minds of people. I have my own assumptions here, but I'm going to see what you guys think. So we will leave it there. So McKee Masters Monday. Um, I know we covered a lot of heavy topics today. We went over them quickly. I don't like to ramble on for too long about this type of thing, but um, go back through and pause it and take notes if you need to and think about it. And you'll see how all of those things probably tied into this last point here. Thanks again. Like, share, subscribe.